Alright, so that was crazy interesting, dude. Ah, you're back. Oh, I can't tell him that I found the book. Hm. Farewell. And again with this. <laughs> All right, I am going to read all of the books that I found in that other library, and I'll probably make this its own episode, just so you can skip it if you want. But yeah, just since I'm already here, I'm going to read all those books now. And, uh... So why are these still considered quest items, then? Wait a minute. But these aren't? Okay, I am confused. Um... Okay... Oh, whatever. But these aren't considered quest items? Okay, whatever. So yeah, I'm going to read these so that I can then sell them and then and I know I could just read them and put them in the glossary to read for later but I if I do that then I won't know I won't be able to quickly identify that they're the ones I haven't read yet so I'm just gonna do this now Toussaint a duchy out of tales of fantasy and wonder don't worry I'm not gonna read the whole book that way When a traveler from the northern realms first crosses the border onto Toussaint, he feels a place he feels at once as though he has stepped into a land ripped straight from the pages of a fantastic fairy tale. He will know no inclement weather there, for even the winters of Toussaint are mild and sunny, ew, with only gentle calming breezes and not a hint of gale. He will know no hunger, for the trees and bushes of that land burst with ripe and juicy fruits all the year long. He will know no loneliness, for each and every soul he encounters will treat him like a long-lost friend. He will not find a single backwater of dullness, boredom, or inquietude in this overflowing stream of marvel. In Toussaint the wine rages in torrents, music plays ceaselessly, and everywhere the air is filled with the sound of birdsong and the twittering of beautiful maids, who are never stingy with their ample charms when a handsome knight comes a-calling. The capital of the duchy, Beauclair, is an architectural gem full of glorious elven monuments, delicately soaring towers, masterfully carved reliefs, and atmospherically mysterious ruins. Only the rare sun in a field of black. Wait, only the rare sun in a field of black, the odd gold and dark stain on an otherwise pristine edifice, reminds one that this land, this fable incarnate, is a vassal of Nilfgaard. Heh. <laughs> the Chronicles of Redania. Crown of what calls of Redania. Vrid, Vridank the Elf. Vridank? I don't know. Despite what one might conclude from his moniker, not one drop of elven blood flowed in King Vridank's veins. Hmm. They called him the Elf because of his exceptional beauty, and for the great admiration he felt for the Ein Shi. This fascination, seemingly harmless, would have horrible long term consequences. King Vridank, splitting in the face of Oh, spitting in the face of all laws and customs, chooses his wife a half-elf, and one of low status at that, known as Beatrix of Kovir. That sounds very familiar also. The fruit of this regrettable and short-lived... Mez Alliance? I don't know, was Falka. Also sounds familiar. Who later for fomented bloody revolt against her own father. Though this surprise, though this uprising was ultimately extinguished and Falka herself burned at the stake, the young state was thereafter thrown into chaos for years to come. I think Falka sounds like the name that Ciri gave herself when she was with the rats. Hmm. When she was running with the rats. That might be the name she gave herself. Maybe she named herself after that. Hmm. The collected verse of Gonzalo de Verceo. Love. To love is to build a house of cards, or play a game of chess. But one wrong word or ill-thought move, and you must start it all afresh. <laughs> 
Tide. Whenever I watch the tide recede, cold coils of fear grip round my heart, but the seas sneak back, calm and sure, in the dark of night as they have before, or will they stay on distant shores, leaving crushed shells and washed-up dreams as memory of serfs of yore? <laughs> All right. Holy Tome of the Eternal Fire. The fire protects. Whoever shall stand in its light, him no evil shall ever harm. The fire cleanses. Like a wound puffed up with dirt and pus, so too must a soul inflamed with sin and vile deeds be burnt clean. The fire cannot be contained. Whatsoever lies in its path shall be burnt. Whosoever raises a hand against it shall be reduced to ash. The fire illuminates the darkness. The evil that in shadow lurks shall be revealed in the fire's harsh light and perish in its smoldering embers. Whosoever seeks to hide his guilt and lecherous work in darkness shall stand naked before the devouring flames. Let us pray, brothers and sisters. The fire enlightens, burns, and cleanses. The fire protects, warms, and lights the path. The fire exposes, incinerates, and destroys evil. Sounds pleasant. <clears throat> The Horse Whistler Breaking in a horse's psyche is a simple matter of instilling your will as the rider into your mount, acquiring its trust and training its obedience. Horses are intelligent, noble beasts, so they should be treated with tenderness and a decisive and firm energy. Mayer, the unquestioned authority in this area, emphasizes that when training one's mount, a rider must eternally... a rider must eternally on the lookout for errors in the training itself. Every time the taming process ends in failure, the rider must look for the blocking error first of all in his own actions, secondly in the horse's anatomy, and only in a last resort by concluding the horse has a naturally difficult temperament. Adhering to this principle protects one from undue punishments, which destroy the possibility of reaching an understanding between rider and mount and make it impossible to gain the animal's trust. Interesting. Pearls of the North Novigrad. Oh boy. This will be a long one. <laughs> no one can claim to have traveled the northern realms who has not been to Novigrad. If I were forced to list what during my many meanderings has made the greatest impression on me, it would be precisely this great and yet at the same time free city. Ha. A metropolis worthy of the Empire, its only flaw is that the civilization Nilfgaard carries within her has not yet enlightened it. Huh. That is why hordes of reactionary cultists of the eternal fire dwell in the midst of its excellent buildings and superb commercial infrastructure. One feels as though superstition is how the local hierarch and his temple guards cement their power over the city dwellers. And many they are to control, for the city counts no less than 30,000 of inhabitants. Hmm. I wonder, does the city really seem that big? Because, I mean... I can walk from one side of the city to the other in, what, 10 minutes? I'd say that's not, that's not a realistically big city, probably. While strolling through its fabulous port, surrounded by marvels of architecture, it is hard to imagine that centuries ago, Novigrad was a mere minor elven townstead. When the city fell into the hands of the Nordlings, its problems grew exponentially, for as is well known, the people of the North can do a great many things, but peaceful and orderly cohabitation is not one of them. And so Novigrad first belonged to Redania, and then fell under Temerian rule, until finally, after endless compromises and bargains, at last became a free city. But is the city truly free? I dare to doubt it. Redanian influence makes itself felt too strongly on every street corner, and the fact that the city is located within Radovid's territory speaks for itself. While wandering the city's streets, I came across four water mills, eight banks, and nearly 19 pawn shops. There are also a great many houses of simple pleasures, such as taverns and brothels, simple pleasures, and Novigrad's commitment to matters of faith is borne witness to the fact too by the fact that the city contains no less than, I kid you not, 19 temples to the eternal fire. What more can be said? I think Novigrad has all the makings of the capital of the world, and perhaps that is what it will one day become. First, however, someone needs to bring order to within her walls. Some of this, I wonder how much of this is typos and how much of it is just weird word phrasing that I haven't heard before. Alright, I will sell these. And that's that. <laughs>